So, first of all, just ignore whatever's going on with my hair. Um, it's pushing 100 degrees out here, it's hot, and I just don't feel like doing anything with it. So, if it's flapping around, just ignore it. Also, I'm sorry if you hear that helicopter, it's actually below me. And the reason for that is because I am at one of the most beautiful places where I live that there is. Just look at this view. There's a helicopter. A lot of people talk about how much they hate this place and I mean I get it. There's not a lot here. But you can't hate a view like this. It's it's stunning. It's just gorgeous. That's actually the helicopter for the hospital. They do circles right there and then they land. But anyway, today's going to be a little bit different than usual because it's 2 o'clock right now and uh, I should be at work. But I worked overtime the other day and I worked two and a half hours over. And instead of paying me overtime, they want me to do what they call flex which basically means I worked two and a half hours over, so I need to come in two and a half hours late the next day. So that's today. I was supposed to be there at 1, and I didn't leave until 1.30, so I don't have to be at work until 4, and it's 2 right now. So I'm going to use this time for you guys. It's hot. It's really hot. But that's actually the point of today's video. I'm going to try to go and um, it's going to make it a little different because I'm going to a place I've never been before which always has an influence on whether I catch fish or not. Um, but the point of today's video is basically to show you guys what I like to do when it's dog days of summer, pushing 100 plus degrees, uncomfortable, unbearably hot, and show you some tips and tricks that I like to use that will still help me catch fish because despite many beliefs you can still catch really really nice fish when it's this hot. People just don't go fishing anymore when it's this hot because they think they can't catch fish and it's that's not the case. The case is you just gotta know where to look, what to look for, what to use, how to use it and all that. There's many 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 videos on YouTube about how to catch fish in the summer when it's this hot. I'm just wanting to share with you guys my take on that so I can maybe possibly give you some new information that will help you get more fish on the boat or on the bank, whatever the case may be. But real quick, before we get into it, I do want to say that one of my all-time favorite go-to summer lures I may use today, but I'm not really going to talk about it, and that's just because I just done a video, not my last video, but the one before that, on that lure, everything about it. So I'll try my best to like put it up here somewhere, and if not, then it'll be in the description, and you can go check that video out. As much as I would love to sit here all day, I can't fish here, so uh, let's go ahead and get into this. So a little bit of backstory, some detail about what I do for work is I drive a transport vehicle and in the morning I pick up the kids and I bring them to the drop-in center and then at the end of the day I take the kids back home and every day I'm on this highway right here taking some people home, I see this pond. And uh, I've always wanted to fish it. I don't know if you're allowed to fish it. I don't see any, no trespassing signs or no fishing signs. And I've seen people here before, but I've always wanted to stop. And the kids kept telling me, you know, there's no fish in there. There's no fish in there. So I was bummed. But then the same kids that told me that actually come here and tried and caught a ton of bluegill. So I know there's bluegill in here. I don't know if there's any bass, but this is the only way to find out. So. 
I'm gonna get rigged up and try. I'm gonna throw a Senko, which is the lure that I said I wasn't gonna talk much about. I'm gonna try that because that's a, a good way to find some, some fish. And I don't have my frog rod, but I'm still gonna throw a frog. Before I got a frog rod, I would always use a medium heavy and put a frog on like 15 pound mono and you know, it's not ideal. And I run a high risk of uh, breaking off, but sometimes to get them to bite, you have to do some risky things. So let's do it. See, I see bluegill right there. And this right here, along the edge here, this is really good, which is why I brought the frog, by the way. So as I said before, I don't know if there's any bass in here. I have no idea. Definitely looks like a place that would have some bass in it. Yep, there's bass, I just seen one. That's good. Oh, I just got bit. Oh, he spit it out. He was a little guy, but still, that is a really good sign. It was enough to bring the hook out. So, uh, all right. Have a good feeling. Maybe able to catch us some fish here. A lot of these big fish might be out more in the middle because this doesn't really seem like a deep pond so if I'm not seeing anything up on the bank and it's this hot I know a lot of those fish will be out in in the deeper water I don't know how deep this is so I can't really say because if it's not a deep pond I've noticed a lot of the times instead of going out deep they will stay up shallow because they can get away from the sun more in the shallows than they could in the deep. Because it's not deep enough to, you know, hide the light. But I'm gonna quit talking and actually try to fish because I've already missed one and, uh... There's one. That's not a bad one. Come here, dude. All right. Okay, so I need to do a little bit of surgery. He's bleeding a little bit. Should be okay. I have uh, a, um, uh, a hook release thing that my wife got me that I can try out for the first time, finally. There we go. So, Brittany, if you're watching this, this thing is awesome and it works really well. Let me get him in some, some water and kind of bring him back a little. So I don't want to keep this guy out of the water any longer because he, uh, he kind of inhaled that hook. I had to get it out of his throat. But there he goes. Yeah, he'll be fine. I just had to do a little bit of surgery. So I'm gonna go ahead and say if it wasn't for my wife, that fish would have died because I had no way of getting that hook out of his throat. So uh, everybody leave a like for my wife. She just saved that fish. And if you don't believe in saving fish, you shouldn't be on this channel. So with that first fish catch, we've just learned three things. Number one, there's fish in here. Number two, there's good fish in here. 
Number three, they're out in the middle because they're getting away from the sun. That's what I was trying to say. Um, they'll stay up these uh, bank lines and hide in mats of grass or brush or anything that's laying over. But a lot of times they'll move out to the middle if it's deep enough to shelter them from the sun. Because if you've been diving or you've ever, you know, even with your eyes closed, you go under the water, the farther you go down, the darker it gets. So these bass are down deep to stay away from the sun. And one thing that I did notice where I cast, I didn't cast there on accident. At the end of that big mat of grass, I can see it. I don't know if you guys can, but there's a little drop off, like a little cliff. I cast it on top of it and just pulled it, uh, pulled it over the edge and it floated down that edge. And as soon as it got to the bottom, I felt my line tick a couple times. Um, he barely hit it, and that's because a lot of times in, these, in this heat like this, the bass are a little bit more lethargic and slow moving. But now we know they're in here, so I'm going to shut up. I'm going to try to catch some more. Okay, so that was just awesome. And now that I know that there's really good fish in here, I also hear frogs. So I know that these bass eat frogs. And if you can see what I see, all of this grass right here, on the other end over there, it gets really, really grassy. And I guarantee there's going to be some frog fish in there. All right. I'm going to go against what I usually do and tie a frog onto this setup right here and hope I don't get broken off and hope we get lucky. Okay, so I'm not going to do that because I'm a complete idiot and I left my frogs at home. So instead of a frog, I went and tied on one of my other favorite go-to summer baits. And that is a jig. Uh, I'm going to walk that way a little bit because there's more grass and more cover and I just feel like usually more grass and more cover means more fish. So I'm going to make my way over here. I am upset because I don't have my frogs, but I feel like the upset would be a lot worse if I hooked a huge fish and broke off because I didn't have my frog rod. So basically, this just means I have to come back and I'm okay with that. I'll come back and bring my frog rod and try it in. So spots like this just scream like fish to me. Um, you could use the jig or the Senko here. I'm gonna use the jig just because I've already caught one on the Senko. But places like this with a lot of grass, and if you look really close, you can see right there where the water kind of, like, it breaks down and there's an edge line there. A lot of those fish will be sitting on the edge line. I feel like the best spots here are over on the other side. Especially right over there. I don't know if you can see where I'm pointing, but there's a lot of shade. That's gonna be a, a game changer when it comes to fishing in uh, the summer. Really, the only kind of cover you need to know is shade. There's many different types of shade you can look for that shade from like a layover, shade from like this grass, shade from a rock, shade from a hill, any kind of shade. That's where your bass are going to be. I'm not surprised that there's fish in here, but I did not expect to catch like a two pounder on like my first real try. Overall, the goal for today has actually already been done. Like. I know there's fish in here. I know there's good fish in here. And now, I mean, there's no way I got lucky enough to catch the biggest bass that's in this pond on my first catch, so. So this shows me that people do fish for bass here. All right, we're gonna head back down here. Okay, so we're back to this other side and uh, it's not really two separate ponds. It's um, right here at all these uh, cattails right here. It's 
it's kind of like a dam and it runs into this part over here so i'm gonna come right over here and uh i'm dripping with sweat it is so freaking hot i throw it right here because even though it's very little there is some flowing water moving in right here the longer you fish the more you realize that fish love to hang out anywhere that there's like a current or any kind of water coming in or going out as a matter of fact i see a few small bass right here but i want the big ones i'll go out on a limb and say that they're going to be somewhere else because this is too open there's not really any shade so even though this video didn't turn out quite the way I wanted it to I'm still gonna try to give you guys tips and uh, this next tip is one of my absolute favorite things to fish summer winter spring fall does not matter I absolutely love fishing when I see these and uh, you're about to see when I get down here it's one of my favorite things to do and um, if you've seen any of my previous videos you've seen me catch some really good bass in spots like this especially uh, when it was uh, getting into early spring and it was still really cold I fished there multiple times in a few days and caught two or three, you know, three and a half, four pounders. What I'm talking about is drains like that. Okay, the water is a bit deeper over here. There's a huge bass right there. Okay, that's like a four pounder. He's seen me, so I know he's not gonna be interested. But if I didn't try, I wouldn't be a fisherman. I don't know where he went. Now I'm upset. That was a big fish. There's not much grass over here either. Oh wow. There's another really nice fish. He got it. He got it. He got it. Get up here, bud. Oh my God. Wow, look at this, look at this hook, look at that, it is barely, barely in there, oh my god, I don't know who said there wasn't fish in here, but they've lost their minds, look at this dude, oh. So I couldn't get my scale to work properly, so we're just gonna say he's about three. So uh, I'm, I'm fine with that. That's awesome. All right, I'm gonna let this dude go. See ya. Ah, oh, yes, that's awesome. He's just chilling right here. Oh, that was sweet. Probably one of my most memorable um, catches of the year so far because I threw out there when I seen it and I told you guys like there's a big bass right here and I just watched him come up and just inhale it. That was just insane. All right, so 
I had to unfortunately leave and head back to work because it is 3.40 and it takes about 20 or 25 minutes to get there and I gotta be there at 4 so I gotta hustle. Um, I'm glad I found another place to fish. I'm tired of giving you guys the exact same videos and you know this will help me out a little bit. Yeah I know it's only one new spot and that's gonna eventually get old too but now I can legitimately like have pond hopping videos and go to three or four different places at once like in one day and you know it just it, it feels good to have a new place. New places are always exciting um, and the fact that I only caught two fish. I was only there for like an hour and a half and the two fish that I caught, the only two fish that I caught were both over two pounds. One was three, one was about two, two and a half. Um, that's, that's good fish. Like, I, I, I think one was about two and the other one was about three. I don't think it was two and a half. So it's about five pounds in two fish, which is definitely not bad for a place that I've never fished before in the middle of the summer, 98 degrees exhausting uncomfortable unbearable heat and I'm catching fish like that that goes to show that you can catch fish in the heat you just got to use the right bait and know where to throw that bait you have to know what your target is if that makes sense so my target like I said always revolves around shade as long as there's shade I know that there's a good possibility that there's a bass sitting in the shade so Anyway, I have to head back to work, so I'm not gonna be able to uh, fish anymore today, unfortunately. But my car is so close to being fixed. Literally, all the parts are fixed. They put a new um, injector valve and uh, something else in it, and they machined the head so it wasn't warped. They said it wasn't warped much anyway, but they machined it, and they seated the rest of the valves, and they pressure checked it, and Everything is done. The only thing left to do is to put the engine back together and that's what they're doing now. So any day, the next few days, I'll have my car back and then these videos will be back to a more normal schedule. So I do apologize for you know it taking so long, but you know, life happens sometimes and there's really nothing we can do about it. Um, real quick, if you made it to this part of the video I want to personally thank you for taking the time to watch my videos and also let you guys know that me and the wrong angling channel we have collaborated in the past but for some reason every single time we collab we don't do good we we don't we don't really catch fish so if you guys want to see us collab again I feel like that pond would be a really good place to do it. We can do like a legit challenge where one of us fishes one pond and the other fishes the other pond and use the same bait and see who catches the most or the biggest fish. I don't know, It's I just thought it'd be a good idea. Um, I know he would be down for it. I don't know when he's gonna be visiting this way again, but if you guys would like to see that, make sure to like this video and let me know in the comments if you would wanna see that because I know, I know he'd do it and it'd make a good video and we could do some kind of stakes like you know winner gets something or loser has to do something whatever you guys want to do just let me know some uh, ideas down in the comments but anyway thank you guys so much for watching i'm gonna have to cut it short here and get back to work so if you enjoyed this video go ahead and like comment let me know what you thought about it what your favorite part was what you liked the best or let me know what you didn't like or what i could work on and um if you're new here, don't forget to hit the subscribe button and ring that little bell so YouTube will notify you when I upload a video. And uh, yeah, that's, that's gonna have to do it for today. Thank you guys so much for watching. I will catch you on the next one. Peace. <laughs> Look at this beast.